Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all having a wonderful day and today I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts about what we saw at Infinite and kind of my concerns and what I'm, what I'm excited about. So I'm kind of late to this but um, I kind of just had to like, you know, view everything and kind of just let everything settle. So overall, with what we saw at E3 for Halo, I was pretty satisfied. Um, you know, there is some concerns I've had, I have about the multiplayer, but um, overall, I think it was really cool. I was expecting a little more. I feel like they're so secretive about this game, which I don't like. And so I kind of just want to give you guys my thoughts on everything we saw there. So let's go ahead and tackle the campaign first. So we actually saw a small little teaser for the campaign. I was not expecting this at all. I thought it was gonna be completely multiplayer stuff only so this was actually pretty cool seeing that we got to see a little bit of the campaign stuff it wasn't much but you know regardless it was awesome that we got a tiny bit of campaign and um yeah he basically they basically just showed off like a little cutscene, a tiny bit of the world um and from what we've seen i like how they kind of showed the world a bit and you could kind of see that it is definitely like more open worldish because you could kind of see that it seems like you can establish outpost or something because you could see like a green light and it seems like you gotta like capture it or something maybe it's like under banished control and then once you capture it it turns green um and you could kind of see and you can also see like a weapon crate box where it seems like you can you know switch out your weapons or maybe upgrade them or something like that as well as like a vehicle pad thing that potentially maybe you can actually like spawn a vehicle of your choice and you know explore the world but yeah it's it seems really fun i think the gameplay is going to be super fun um there's nothing really bad i could say about what i saw or rather critique about the halo infinite campaign teaser thing we got um i just gotta say that it does definitely feel like more of a halo game than what we've gotten before like halo 5 and 4 you know the soundtrack is definitely slapping it sounds like freaking sounds like halo music which is what i love about it and you know chief's armor looks great i mean the whole art style of this game and the music is great you know the campaign actually seems interesting um and it does seem like it kind of does continue halo 5 story um, as Cortana, you know, is still going like rogue or whatever, and they had to, I guess, develop a second Cortana to possibly maybe replace the first one, um, because I think she's called like the weapon or something, so I think she's probably going to be used to take down the original Cortana, and she's probably going to replace the original one, I don't know. But, um, overall with the campaign stuff, you know, everything was great, I can't really critique anything about it, I loved everything about it, and, you know, I can't wait to get my hands on and just explore the world because it looks freaking fun. So now let's talk about the multiplayer stuff. And for the multiplayer stuff, there is a couple things that are concerning, but uh, most of it seems like it could be changed. It doesn't, it's not something too huge. And I do have a couple nitpicks, but that's really all all I got. Um, overall, the infinite multiplayer uh, trailer we got and the multiplayer overview video was awesome. Um, we got a lot of info out of them. The only thing I was kind of bummed out about was not getting like an actual like gameplay match i was hoping we would get at least like one actual gameplay match or at least like half of one or something like that so we could actually see how this game works and stuff we did get like small bits of gameplay in the multiplayer overview but um that was really about it so i guess i kind of want to start with my concerns um one thing being is that when watching the multiplayer overview the small little gameplay bits they showed it seemed like there's no medals whenever you kill, get a kill or, you know, like a, like a double kill and all that stuff. It doesn't seem like the medals pop up anywhere. And that's a little concerning because I feel like, you know, the medals are a huge staple of Halo. And maybe it's just because it's pre-release, which I'm hoping it is, that like it's just because of that and they haven't been able to like maybe implement the medals or something. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I hope they don't get rid of the medals because the medals were just you know it was such a cool feature of halo and so that was a little concerning but i'm just gonna let it kind of slide because it seems like you know all this stuff they're showing is pre-release so um, i'm sure the final game probably has the medals and stuff but telling by the gameplay the game overall does look very fun it does definitely feel like kind of a hybrid b between classic and modern halo um you know they still got sprint which i feel like some people are going to be triggered about 
but they did tone down the uh, advanced mobility so it feels kind of like the middle ground which is I th which I think is why a lot of people are you know they're hyped about it because it's not super like like super advanced mobility like Halo 5 and it's not like super slow like original Halo um, you know it's a nice middle ground I feel like and for me I personally I mean I personally like Halo 5's multiplayer but you know I liked classic halo as well so i'm fine with whichever route they really go because i like both of them but i can definitely understand um both points on why people like you know the classic style halo and the more modern one for me i really personally don't mind as much i like both another thing that i was a little concerned about was the hud i'm not a huge fan of the hud this is kind of more of a nitpick but um the HUD kind of seems very, like the UI, the player UI f seems very compacted in the corner. They have like your grenades, your, you know, your weapons, your ammo counter all compacted in the right bottom corner, it seems like. And I'm not really a fan of that. I don't like how everything's compact there. I liked the old style of Halo where you have the grenades on the left, uh, you know, upper corner. And the weapon on the right upper corner. I'm not sure why they decided to compact it like that but it's more of a nitpick it's not something that's gonna stop me from playing the game but um you know it's just kind of i don't know i hope you could customize it maybe you'll be able to customize it that'd be cool but um regardless if you can you know i'll be fine with it i really don't mind but um just kind of like a small little nitpick of mine and so i do want to talk about the equipment a lot of people seem concerned about it which you know it's definitely understandable because some of the uh, equipment does seem a little powerful especially the grapple shot um you know you're able to kind of just grapple power weapons towards you and stuff like that yeah i don't know it's kind of like the jetpack in a sense but i mean i think it still looks cool um i just hope that it's like a one use or at least like th like two time use or something like that i don't know i just hope it's not like something like reaches where you just have an infinite amount where it just recharges um, you know, I'm not really a fan of that. I mean, that's kind of the beauty about having equipment in uh, Halo. You could just remove it and it really wouldn't affect the game itself. And I think that's why a lot of people liked Halo 3 as well, because, you know, you got this cool equipment that, you know, could be fun playing casually, but, um, you can just have it easily removed out of competitive and stuff and it won't affect the game itself at all so i'm not too concerned about the equipment because some of it does seem very overpowered but uh, still f seems fun um and that's really all it comes down to it has to be a fun game but um you know that's like i said that's what's awesome about equipment you could just kind of remove it for competitive modes and stuff like that so overall i'm not too concerned about the equipment because that stuff could probably you know easily be removed and possibly even be tuned and you know nerfed or buffed one thing i also want to know is the gravity hammer i i don't know if people talked about this but the gravity hammer seems like it has more of a role now in the sandbox because i feel like in halo like you know halo 3 reach and 4 it felt kind of just like a it felt kind of like a reskinned energy sword i mean it could you could kind of like do like a cool little like extra jump with it and stuff like that and it could also like deflect projectiles like rockets and i think that's about it yeah just rockets and stuff um which is cool you know but overall it kind of just felt like a copy of the energy sword this is just my opinion of course and it feels like it, from what we're seeing in these little gameplay bits that they show in the multiplayer overview it seems like it has more of a role it actually feels like a you know this devastating you know hammer because when you see a hammer you kind of think of like destruction i would say and you know as they show it when the guy uses it, it has like a huge area of attack like it, it he takes down like three spartans it's crazy it, it seems like so it seems more powerful and like more impactful i like it and it you know kind of has more of its role instead of just being a copy of the energy sword it actually has like an area of attack and you know you just destroy stuff with it it's freaking awesome so now the one thing that i think the community is mostly focused about is being able to store overshield and camouflage now this stuff i feel like a lot of people are very concerned about because you know being able to store an overshield and camouflage is definitely huge and being able to use it whenever you want 
is definitely game changing and something different. Um, I personally don't, I don't really like it, but I just need to see more to like properly judge it. This goes for like everything I'm talking about, to be honest. I just need to see like more gameplay of this to like properly judge it. But from what we're seeing, it is a little concerning because if someone gets an overshield, uh, an overshield, they can kind of just like, you know, if you're about to kill them, they could kind of hide behind something and just pop that overshield and kind of just turn like the tide of battle. And I don't really like that. That seems very annoying. It kind of seems like armor lock, you know, in a sense, I guess, where, you know, you're about to kill a player and then this freaking guy, you know, just locks his armor and you know you can't kill him anymore i mean it, it i don't know it kind of just feels like that where it's just annoying and it kind of just destroys the flow of gameplay in my opinion but i will say that it seems like all the equipment is visual so you can tell when someone has you know an overshield and everything pretty much so i think that kind of counters it a little bit um if you see if you're chasing a guy and you're like about to kill him you're gonna see that yellow trail and see that he has overshield and so you're most likely gonna either like maybe try to chuck a grenade try to kill him before he pops that pops that overshield or just you know back off completely so i feel like it kind of counters it but um i don't know i gotta see more see how it kind of plays out so i don't know how i feel about it i mean it is a little concerning but uh overall i'm just i'm just kind of waiting until we get like either the flights to test it out ourselves or you know more gameplay and see how it kind of like you know plays out so i can't really say much about it um, but i can definitely understand the community's concern about it so they also talked about you know being able to destroy the wheels on a warthog and stuff having destructible parts i think that definitely does add more depth to the vehicles um and it's awesome having that kind of stuff being able to like pop the tires and stuff and I feel like there's really nothing negative about that. That's just cool. I mean, come on. That's freaking awesome. Being able to, like, pop tires and just... <laughs> I mean, that's cool. I don't see anything negative about that. If someone gets angry about that, I really don't understand why. That's That just adds more, more depth to, like, vehicles and it just makes it so much better. And that way you could actually kind of counter vehicles a lot better. Because when I play freaking BTB and you have, like, one team who just controls all the vehicles... Oh my god, it's so annoying because then you can't really counter it. Because, you know, they're just constantly spawn killing you with the vehicles and stuff like that. So having, like, these weak points and destructible parts is really cool. You know, talking about that, they also showed, like, the Razorback, you know, being able to store, um, you know, weapons and objectives and stuff. That's freaking awesome. I've always been a fan of this kind of stuff. Having, like, support vehicles like this is super awesome i think that's why a lot of people love the falcon because the falcon you were able to like you know transport people and stuff like that and it was like a team-based vehicle where you had to work together and having those kind of vehicles is really awesome and the razorback is kind of like in that style um you know it's used for transport and you could transport you know weapons players it's really cool i like those kind of vehicles so i pretty much covered everything that they talked about in halo infinite um, they did show a lot of customization stuff, and overall, I mean, the customization looks great. Um, it's basically, I think it's probably the best customization we'll ever have. Um, and it has a lot of inspiration from Reach. You're able to customize, like, all parts. That's really good that they're going back to that. And, you know, you could have, like, textures and stuff. It's really cool. Um, I like it. The only thing I didn't really like about it, or at least the th one thing I was really concerned about that, was that... I mean, maybe this is just, just kind of me with my old style thinking, I guess you could say. I don't, I don't know. But I've always been a fan of, like, playing games where, you know, you unlock stuff by playing the game and not just by purchasing it. Uh, maybe this, that's just me and kind of being stuck in the past because I feel like that's not really a thing anymore. I feel like cosmetics, you just pay for them nowadays. You don't really, you know, earn armor and stuff like that in games nowadays. But, um... You know, they actually talked about that, and they said that a lot of the armors will be unlockable just by playing the game, and I believe he even says, like, only, like, some of them will only be, you know, unlockable by playing the game, and hearing that, you know, was such a relief for me, because I was worried that since, you know, it was going free to play, you know, all the armor would just be paid, you know, you would just have to pay some money for it, and 
and I don't know, man, I mean, I, I like being able to unlock armor, so having some of them be, or I mean, he says a lot, which is cool, having a lot of them be, like, you know, earnable by playing the game was just such a relief for me, and I don't know, I think it's awesome how they have, you know, both paid cosmetics and earnable ones, I think that's absolutely awesome, and I'm, I am, like, it's awesome, I'm satisfied with that, that's awesome. So, you know, overall, I am definitely excited for this game. A couple concerns about the equipment um, and a couple nitpicks, but I mean, that's really all I got. I mean, overall, I liked everything I saw. There was really nothing like super bad that makes me not want to play the game or stuff like that. I mean, everything about it just looks fun. And I feel like a lot of people are kind of excited about it as well. People who haven't played Halo for such a long time so i think it's just awesome seeing this like excitement for this game and i feel like this will be the one that they actually nail this time and you know i just hope that they launch with you know the core modes i hope it's not super bare bones like halo 5 um you know i hope it launches with a good amount of content and I look forward to the post content as well. I hope they take the post content stuff seriously. Um, and you know, add like campaign expansions, all this kind of stuff, like have these cool events. I hope they take it seriously and not play uh, like catch up. Cause the one thing that scares me about live service games is that people don't actually use it. Like they don't actually treat it like a live service. When they say live service, it's typically just them saying, we're gonna release this game unfinished and fix it over time <laughs> or finish it over time and then eventually to start adding new content and that's kind of what scares me about life service games is that you know it's typically like that for a lot of games but um i i hope halo infinite isn't like that and regardless if it is um you know the gameplay and everything i've seen looks solid um but i just hope that I hope this is the one, and I'm excited again um, for Halo. Definitely a lot better than what we've seen of Halo 5 and everything. And, you know, I'm excited. There's not much else I can say. But yeah, with that being said, let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for the new Halo game? I sure am. Um, and I can't wait to get, like, actual gameplay footage or maybe even flight soon. I mean, I feel like they're going to start next month, I think July. So they've been really pushing the Halo Insider stuff recently. So yeah, you guys, consider subscribing, liking the video, show your support. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.